Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. This is Miles Luigi. Let's see Lord Crump get scolded at. Uh, seeing through the eyes of the enemy, they're starting to get a little bit of worried. So I must say we're we must be doing a really good job. All right, so here we get to see some really interesting plot development between Peach and Tech. Um, you remember Tech is a computer programmed by Grotus to serve as his uh, mainframe computer master, do his bidding, and here we see Tech wanting to. Get some data from Grotus that he is unable to get, and I, I love this. Although I can view all data on the network, I'm not able to get, you know, data of computers that are not linked to the network. Duh! <laughs> of course! Yes, any information that isn't connected to a computer connected to the network, you can't get at. So. <coughs> anyway, surprisingly, he wants to get at this information. I wonder why. Let's go help him get that data. Once again, he's a robot made to serve Lord Grotus, and, well, it almost looks like he wants to portray Lord Grotus a little bit here. It would help if I could press the switch. Okay, because Tech is the mastermind he is, there will be absolutely no guards while we're walking through the hallway. No stealth whatsoever. Matter of fact, I can make, uh, <laughs> Peach can make very large tapping sounds, and no one will ever notice. And there are, there is nobody in this room. But, uh, we're gonna go ahead and make a potion. Alright, so we have to make a potion to make us invincible, except Tech isn't going to tell us how to do it. We instead have to play a mini little mini game. It's just a little logic game where you just have to read the notes and figure it out. None of the notes actually tell you exactly where to put it here, but here we see that we need to put the green and red potions in the end. And in case you didn't read the previous note, we have to put the red potion not on the far right, which would imply that we put the green potion there and the red potion there. And there's another note that tells us where to put the other potions. Once you get those two potions, though, it's, it's a cinch. So, for example, blue potion next to the red potion. Well, I already got this puzzle figured it out. Once again, it's for the sake of a mini game. <laughs> Tech doesn't tell us how to do it. We gotta figure it out ourselves. Not a difficult logic problem at all. So I love that. I press a button to make a beaker appear. <coughs> So now we have to pour each of those uh, potions, or whatever the hell was in those breakers, in here. Just by pressing the button at each stop. Now you'd think it would go logically. No, it goes back. It goes back. It gets even better. It goes back. It then skips spaces. So, so you know, you think you're going forward, and then you try hitting the A button on the one there that just went past, and it doesn't work. <laughs> That's okay. I don't even know what the hell I'm pushing pouring into these things. The game's like green potion, red potion, probably know it's hydrogen peroxide or something like that. Um, this is the 30 second minigame. I'm... yeah, we're not waiting 30 seconds. Okay, so the fastest way to get this into our bloodstream is to drink it. Well, I guess that worked. It worked instantaneously. Um, a needle would have worked better, but I doubt they wanted to do that in a Nintendo, Nintendo game. It just instantly works after you drink it. Um, notice that we have to take our clothes off. Um, 
please no comments on this part. I'm instead going to comment on the fact that it still sounds like I have shoes on, and that, uh, <laughs> Peach here has a shadow, yet light is traveling through her, no problem. It's kind of like, uh, just something purposely done so you can actually tell where you're walking, you know you have a shadow. But, you know, if visible light was actually passing through you completely, and you're completely transparent, you would have no shadow. You would have no more shadow, so... I guess all those stories about your shadow being evil or something like that no longer apply to you if you are completely transparent. Except if you're Peach, because for some reason you have a shadow when you're completely transparent. So Sir Grotus isn't even in his evil mastermind room, but um, one of those yucks guys is. <laughs> He's confused. And as we can see, there is a whole ton of nibblers in this room. Now, this computer here, I have to imagine, is probably connected to whatever Grotus has set up as a network here. But yet, there is some data that uh, Tech is unable to get. It's actually over on the shelf. It's a floppy disk! That's right, G Grotus is all old, old school, and he still uses floppy disks. So insert that floppy disk, and the computer has a terrible security policy and does the auto-run program on the floppy disk, which looks like a Nintendo Famicom, by the way, but Grotus is an idiot. I mean, he's a programmer, and he has auto-run enabled on his computer. What an idiot. What a buffoon. Next time I'm on Grotus' computer, I'm going to have to make sure I bring in one of my uh, fancy USB flash drives that's able to, you know, totally wreck a computer when you plug it in because of the auto run on it. <laughs> um, anyway, copied the data, tech grabbed it off the network, let's hope no one was sniffing on the network because then they would know what's going on. And no one sees my shadow! Oh, you didn't see anything. Thank you, game. We're back to normal, finally. So drink the green potion. So throughout all this entire minigame, it is possible to mess it up, and you get various other things like Peach will shrink or grow big. Um, I'm certain some elite Paper Mario expert might actually know them all. I don't. It's something I've never really cared for. So we got the data! This is uh, another favorite moment here. The data is heavily encrypted! You know, if you actually study a little bit of uh, data cryptology, usually if you encrypt a hard drive or data, you encrypt it with such a long uh, hash or key, such an obnoxiously long key that the time it would take to crack it is uh, um, light years away. However, Tech is a supercomputer and he's going to get that data cracked. Let's hope no one logs into Tech and looks at the running processes and sees the, uh, the data cracking process. Well, you never know, maybe Tech will just hide that from everyone. He's a, he's a smart guy. He's not going to list that process. What are you? You don't deserve to know that process, even if you are root. <laughs> Alright. So let's hope Tech doesn't get caught here, because um, uh, he's doing stuff that's actually helping us here. And you could probably guess where Bowser is. He is always two steps behind Mario, and let's take a look. Yep, two steps behind Mario. Back in Twilight Town, it's still Twilight. <laughs> okay, so let's go talk to some people about the Crystal Star and... They, uh, are completely scared of me. Eh, hey, this is use useless conversation. Um, <laughs> let's check all the bushes. 
Oh, Bowser can't even brush all the br bushes, just some of them. Oh my gosh, I got a weapon! Wait, what? 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 No, I got a weapon! Darn it! Well, let's just actually continue on with the, uh, with the game here. A way to say that out loud when there's a giant Koopa right behind you. Haha. <laughs> 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 ha ha. I've got an army behind me. What do you have? <laughs> Aha! We also have an army behind us. Well, this is a pointless conflict if you ask me. But, I can't imagine this ending well. This isn't going to end well. Looks like Twilight Town was just wiped off the face of the planet. Um, I'm going to have to check it out next time I'm playing as uh, Mario. <laughs> uh, well, maybe it's just a normal grenade and not a super bomb bomb and Twilight Town isn't horribly butchered. Not good for a town for a grenade to go off in the middle of the street, though. <clears throat> but, you know, it's practically impossible for Bowser to get a game over. Don't worry, he'll be back. Now we're back at uh, with Mario. I did actually miss a uh, star piece in the island, but the game forces us back to Rogueport, so that means we'll be taking a ride to Rogueport, then a ride back to Key Hall Key, grabbing the star piece, then a ride back to Rogueport. Uh. bright side, the game does give us the ability to go back and forth between Key Hall Key and World Court now. So in case you missed anything, like I did, you're able to go back. It's month, star, day, circle. To anyone who reads this journal, Flavio blesses you, so... Find Flavio's journal. He will, uh, he blesses you. Enjoy your adventure, everyone. So, we're back at the dull armpit of a town. Everyone grown off in a big crowd. There's the big crowd. And the big crowd is still visible. <laughs> Alright, we got a ton of backtracking to do here. Well, not a horrible ton. It's not the worst. Come on, how do I speak to Cortez here? I got a star piece to get. That's the star piece I missed. Alright, so with that, I will see you on the next episode. Wait, never mind. Got an email.
I will see you on the next episode of Let's Play Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. This has been Miles Luigi. Mm-hmm. <laughs>